Hi everyone, I'm Lindy Witten. Welcome to the studio. And today I'm going to be talking about planning, but a different sort of planning than I've talked about before. Before I've talked about uh, looking at your composition, doing thumbnails and value studies and so on. But today I want to talk about planning for success. And one of the best ways I find uh, to do this is getting comfortable with your subject, getting familiar with your subject. And you can see here I've got whole lot of subject work uh, to do with seagulls. Seagulls are a great device if you do a lot of paintings of uh, the sea and the shore. They can add a really great sense of movement and liveliness into your paintings and so I like to put them in. But you need to get them right because seagulls are so recognisable to people. We see them all the time and we, we know when a bird looks like a seagull and when it doesn't. So a great thing to do if you have a subject that you really want to use quite a bit, in, it, maybe for you it's cats or dogs or a particular sort of tree or boats, whatever the subject is, it's a great idea to get really familiar with them. And so there are lots of different ways we can do that. Firstly, take a whole lot of photos, get, a, get yourself a really good collection. You can see in this one here that are a, a number of birds all doing different things. So I've got a little mini collection there of different positions of seagulls that I can work from. So get yourself a set of photos of them. If you don't uh, have access to someone where you can take photos of the subject that you really want to include in your painting, go to, are you familiar with them, Pexel or Pixabay or Wet Canvas. So all those sites, all those sites have um, copyright free photos that you can use in your artwork and it's a great place to get subject matter that you might not have or that you don't have the right view of. Um, so if you're into old rusty trucks and you don't have anywhere you live, go and look on some of these sites for the, some of those um, free images that you can use in your paintings. The next thing to do after you've got all that reference material, so we want to get a lot of reference material. So get yourself a collection and then we want to start using it. Start doing sketches. So we're going to create a whole number of sketches until we can do it without thinking about it. So here's a, some of the different photos I've used to produce these little sketches. So here I have the same bird in the same position. I'm just trying out different um, backgrounds how it looks when you put a darker background, how it looks when you put a, a lighter background. That's just done it with a charcoal um, square and this one I've used some marker pen to make the values a bit darker. Over here another seagull in a different angle and this one I love the jaunty little leg there. It shows you immediately that seagull is moving. So try and get some different views when you're doing the sketches to suggest different um, moods of the subject that you're using, in this case seagulls, and here I've got one moving and I've been practicing how to get the legs to look like they're actually moving and a different view again from the other one I was doing. Over here I've got some different sketches of seagulls in flight so that if I want to use them when they're landing or taking off I've got some experience of, of painting them, of sketching them. So get yourself some sketches and do it regularly until you feel really comfortable with the subject. And then another good thing to do is to do some small studies. So over here I've got a little pastel study. And in that one uh, I've, still, I've got the same little movement that I was practicing in here. It's the same bird but I've made them slightly different. And in here I'm practicing the values of where the shadow would fall on the bird, the cast shadow of the bird, and how to get a few little highlights on those legs and the beak. Does the eye look right? So little studies will help you work those kind of things out. And I've done a couple of little, let's just move one of them. So here's a little acrylic painting of the seagull in a slightly different uh, format, but basically using this, a similar view as to the one with, that I did with the pastels. And here I'm paying attention to how the background looks how do I make the bird stand forward, 
the little movement again and how to get some sort of interest in the background while keeping it really loose. I'm also looking at the colours that I'm using on the highlights and in the darker areas. And I've done that on an orange background which I've let show through. So that little study really helps me. And then I've done another study of a different seagull in a different position uh, looking at, at the reflections, making sure that I've put the reflection the right amount from the body uh, and again looking at the background, keeping it very loose. So I have the ways that I've uh, used. So we've done references, we've got a big collection of references, we've done sketches in our sketchbooks and we've done some small studies. So there are three things that will really help you come to grips with your subject, get familiar with it, and be more comfortable when you come to doing something larger. So let's have a little look at this. I'll take these two down, and I'll just tie up a larger one I've done here, in which I've used three different versions of seagulls, landing here on the rocks, landing here. This one's taking off and flying away and there's some smaller ones in the background. So this is a very big canvas and I've used the ideas and the familiarity I had with the birds, the seagulls, to be able to create them in different ways on a larger painting. So you've probably guessed from that this month I'm going to be concentrating on um, painting almost a portrait of a seagull in our pastel demonstration and then with the acrylic demonstration I'm going to be looking at boats and we're going to use a similar kind of technique when we start thinking about boats. So if you're interested in this planning stage and even if you're not painting in acrylics check in on Friday's session for uh, the planning stage of the boat painting that we're going to do in acrylics. Hope you're really excited about painting birds <laughs> and remember you don't need to paint a seagull. You can use whatever bird reference you like, or you can use something else, another animal, another, anything else that you want to paint. But just use the ideas that I'm going to talk about in the lesson this month to help you become familiar with your subject and then be able to translate it into a larger painting. That's uh, all for me for today. I'll see you next week when we get into the painting itself and we'll plan the actual painting we're going to do uh, and I'll do the underpainting and get it all ready for the next stage of uh, the hard and soft pastels. And then finally in the last week we'll review the painting and see what I could have changed, how I did um, work to my brief that I set myself, whether I met it, whether there are changes I still need to make. See you next time. Bye for now.